I understand, Brigadier. You want the monthly increases for each department. In my case, decreases. Uh -huh. <coughs> uh, yes, yes, sir. I'll get them in the post to you this afternoon. Yes. Goodbye, sir. Yes. What? You're very welcome, sir. Goodbye. <coughs> Bad tempered old basket. He's on the warpath again? Yes, and the mood he's in, he'll have my head for a paperweight. Well, for once, Mr. Hunt, I don't think you've got anything to worry about. Really? Whatever's happened? Well, I've just been doing the monthly check and the figures are most encouraging. Really? Ladies' underwear? Yes. Up? Oh. Five percent. This is encouraging. Carry on. Household linen up seven percent. Soft furnishings up four percent. Kitchenware up ten percent. Up ten percent? Ten percent. Come. Excuse me, Mr. Hunt. Here are the figures from the book department, Miss Sinclair. Oh, thank you, Miss Wilkins. <laughs> oh. Uh, well? 25%. 25%? That's marvellous. We're on a winning streak. <laughs> oh, I get it. For once in our lives, we're winning, and he has to go and mess it all up. All right, where is he? Four o'clock. He'll be in the book department. It's the last Wednesday of the month. Last Wednesday of the month? He's with the ladies' reading circle. Every last Wednesday, he holds a wee soiree to introduce his new book titles. Well, if you kindly tell him to step this way, I would like to remind him this is a department store and not Charlotte Bronte's fan club. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Brooke. Most kind. To quote the bard himself, your words came trippingly off the tongue. <laughs> Very well, now, ladies, the big moment, the climax of the afternoon. The new titles from this month's Book Woman's Bulletin. Ah, uh, I see you were all expectant. <laughs> if you'll pardon the expression. <laughs> now, our first selection comes in the category of Home Hobbies. Oh, yeah. Now, that, steady, ladies. Simmer down, but wait for it. Choice number one, with needle and thimble down the ages. Choice number two, indoor mushroom growing for beginners. And choice number three, brass rubbings through the fence. Oh, no. <laughs> Quite so. Rich fare indeed. But there's more to come. Now, our first fiction choice comes hot from the pen of Miss Ursula Blight, and it's called Melody at Dusk. Uh, is it risky? Mm, heady stuff, Miss Singleton, but uh, told with all Miss Blight's customary discretion. <laughs> I hope it's the unexpurgated version. Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. Any form of censorship is to be deplored. Yes, yes. In that case, perhaps Mr. Swindley would very kindly tell us something about it. Yes, yes, indeed I, indeed I could, ladies. I think you'll agree that this month we really have something to stir the pulse. <laughs> uh, briefly, the story concerns a certain high-born young lady uh, travelling by coach along the Dover Road at the turn of the 19th century. Suddenly, she's carried off into the night, abducted, as it were, by a highwayman. Uh, who, it transpires, is her legal guardian in disguise. You've given away the plot. Oh, dear, yes. <laughs> so I have. <laughs> well, never mind, Miss Singleton. I'm sure the volume will still have many surprises for you. Indeed, I think, ladies, that I should warn you that in one chapter, our heroine actually yields <laughs> her lips. Oh, dear, I'm so afraid <laughs> that is going to happen. Mm. Quite so. Well, now, uh, Miss Braceful, the floor is yours. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Swindiff. As chairman of the ladies' reading circle, I should like to propose a vote of thanks and record again how very much we appreciate all your endeavours on our behalf. Yes. But uh, there is just one thing, Mr. Swindley. Yes. Uh, perhaps Miss we could be a little more up to date. Yes. <coughs> what, uh, yes. What exactly did you have in mind? Well, we've hardly caught up yet with the kitchen sink. I think we should be a little bolder in our choice. Yes, I take your point. <coughs> but, you know, ladies, I do feel that in our early days we should tread warily. Oh. Well, I'm all for... I'm all for venturing into the literary unknown. But such paths are fraught with hazard. Here, here, quite right. We don't want anything sordid. Speak for yourself. <laughs> boldness, Mr. Swindley, boldness. That's what we need. Let us strike out. I agree with this friend. We haven't even been allowed a J. No. It's up to you, Mr. Swindley, to strike a blow for freedom. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> caution, ladies, yes. caution. Yes. I... We haven't had a book by a man for months. No. I think we ought to leave the choice to Mr. Swindley. 
I hate being overstimulated after my bedtime over tea. Oh, I don't <laughs> <know>. <laughs> 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 now, now, ladies, <laughs> ladies, please, now, let us not have any contention well, about it. Well, why not? Excuse me, Mr. Swindley. Ah, Miss Sinclair, welcome to our little circle. I'm sure we can find room for you. Uh, Mr. Swindley. <laughs> I'll just get a chair for you. Uh, Mr. Swindley. Yes. Mr. Hunt would like to see you in his office immediately. On Wednesday afternoon? I thought it was ch his Chamber of Commerce meeting. He can hardly have played nine holes yet. He hasn't played at all. The Brigadier's been nagging him all day about sales figures. Oh, dear, yes. Ladies, I'm afraid you'll have to excuse me. The harsh voice of commerce calls. <laughs> but remember, we will meet again next month with, I hope, even better titles. No, no, sir. No, no. Everything's going well. Yes, sir. Just a few more things to juggle. Uh, fix. Uh, uh, that is, calculate. <laughs> yes, sir. I'll hit, have them in the post here this afternoon. And I think you'll be very, very agreeably surprised. Yes. Goodbye, sir. Bye. Now then, where the devil's our little Beverly Nichols got to? <laughs> ah, there you are, sir. Ah, you wanted to see me, Mr. Hunt. I'm afraid I was rather deeply immersed in the book department. Deeply immersed? Yes. You're practically submerged. Here, have a look at that. <laughs> oh, excellent. What? I see you went round in 78. <laughs> Last week's meeting was not entirely true. <laughs> it's this I'm talking about. Ah, yes, the book department. Disgraceful. Mm. What do you intend to do about it? I think you should understand, Mr. Hunt, that the arts very rarely make a profit. Look at the, look at the last report from the Arts Council, for instance. Three millions in the red. Yet still bringing joy to a happy few. As far as Dobson Hawks is concerned, I haven't even scratched the surface. Look here, Swindy. You're not in this department to serve old ladies with tea and fairy cakes. Good heavens above, soon you'll be offering them lunch. Well, I did. <coughs> Most of them prefer their meals on wheels. Swindy, books are out, I'm hungry's in. I am hungry? Yes, I've worked it out. Plastic dustbins make a bigger profit than books. You can't be serious, Mr. Hunt. Plastic dustbins, cheek by jowl with Georgette hair. What I'm trying to tell you is that your little reading circle is disbanded. I want the shelves cleared. I have bought a job lot of top-selling paperbacks. Not pulp fiction in my book department. Yeah, and the pulpier the better as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> oh, yes. We can, we can, at least we can flog those for a profit. We'll have a quick closing down sale and that's your lot. I can't believe this. The last cultural oasis in this store, sacrificed a mammon, here am I, building up goodwill, my reading circle spreading the word. My ladies are, are insatiable, they never stop soliciting. I don't know what they do in their spare time, Swindley. The culture cruise is over. Good morning, Mr. Swindley. Is it, Mrs. Edgley? I'm having rather a trying one. Oh, I have them like that. Only this morning, do you know, I couldn't find my floor cloth anywhere. Where do you think it was? Tell me. In the tea urn. It... <laughs> Not the urn I made yours in. That reminds me. I must speak to that new assistant in gardening. She's watering the artificial grass again. <laughs> A willing girl, but slow to learn. <laughs> Girls aren't what they were. No, neither are they where they were, it seems to me. They're probably all in the book department. Have you, uh, have you had the peep in there? No, I haven't yet. I haven't been able to nerve myself to face the ordeal. There's a right old ding-dong going on in there. How do you mean? The place is swarming. Those new books are selling like hot cake. They are? Yes, those new paperbacks, Mr. Hunt brought in. Quite so. <sighs> Swindy speaking. Ah, Miss Wilkins. I understand you're very busy in the book department. What? You can't cope with the rush. <laughs> Steady, Miss Wilkins. Remain calmly at your post. I will come down personally and reinforce you. <laughs> You're quite right, Mrs. Edgley. I'm afraid the public taste is becoming somewhat indiscriminate. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, Emily, look. I knew Mr. Swindler was going to make changes, but I had no idea he'd go this far. He never mentioned that title. Or this. Have you seen this? Oh, yes, I've been right through it. Do you know they aren't even married? <laughs> oh, it's absolutely shocking. It's outrageous. The mind boggles. Uh, which are you taking? Well, I think I'm going to have this one. I thought we might exchange. Oh, 
Mr. Swindley. Ladies, I must apologize. There's been a drastic change of policy. We've been looking at your new book titles. <laughs> well, not mine, I can assure you. I would never have exposed you to such an affront to decency and good taste. If you'll come along with me, I have some of our type of book under the counter. Oh, it's all right, Mr. Swindley. We've made our choice. You have? A wise one, I trust. With knapsack through the Chilterns. Oh, no, Mr. Swindley. <laughs> Love on a camel. <laughs> no, 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 please, Miss Book. Love on a camel? <laughs> but you're so fond of Hilda Hopway. I've laid her aside, especially for you. Oh, thank you, Mr. Swindley. But we've quite as much as we can cope with for one week. <clears throat> but, but, ladies. I... But we'll see you on Wednesday. I can't wait to get home. Let's share a taxi. <laughs> ah, Miss Graceville, I have your book of the month. Oh, uh, don't bother, Mr. Swindley. I've picked quite a nice little selection. You have? Yes. Miss Graceville, you're not having love on a camel. No, no, I mean... Oh, yes, I am, Mr. Swindley. And the naked breakfast. You are? Yes, that's just what I meant yesterday. I'm feeling quite alive again. Really? The contemporary approach. And if you've not read this one, Mr. Swingley, you've got a treat in store. Very colourfully written. Scented flower bed. Oh. Gardening. Mm. <laughs> well, I believe something rather interesting does take place in the uh, potting shed. Uh, I'll let you know. Next <laughs> Good night. All right, I'll take this one. Yes, sir. Must be about the last copy of this. Four and six, please. You've had quite a run on this one, have you? We certainly have. They tell me it's a bit naughty. Still, it's a nice title. Thank you. Oh, I beg your pardon, sir. Ah, I see you bought one of our books. Yes, I have. Is this the full extent of your book department? Uh, yes, it is. Uh, a little small, but uh, I think we've got all the best titles. Yes, you have. <laughs> uh, you're pleased, then? Well, not exactly. I've got a complaint. Oh, oh, I see. Well, in that case, you want our Mr. Swindley. He's in charge of this whole department. Looks after it like a mother. Just through there. Thank you. <laughs> I was a teenage dope fiend. Good. <laughs> We've sunk to this. Ah, there you are, Smilly. Well, now, this is something like, isn't it? It's smashing. Smashing? I doubt if there's been such a sorry scene since Sodom and Gomorrah. Rubbish! The old ladies are lapping it up. They love a bit of fun. Fun? There was a glint in their eye that I didn't very much like. Miss Brooks was definitely flushed. And Miss Singleton appeared to be out of all control. Exactly. They're enjoying themselves and we're making money. Oh, by the way, somebody wants to see you in your office. He's got a complaint. I'm not surprised. I'll see him at once. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Swindley does know you're here. He'll not keep you waiting long. Mr. Thompson, isn't it? That's right. I understand you have a complaint. You could say that. Well, I'm sure Mr. Swindley will give you his full attention. Oh, I'm sure he will. Mr. Swindley, this is Mr. Thompson. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Thank you, Mr. Sinclair. Please sit down. Thank you. Now, how can I help you, sir? Well, I wonder whether you care to answer a few questions. Certainly, if I can. Are you responsible for the book department? Responsible, yes. I, I'm sorry if the choice of books has disturbed you, but I'm suffering from some rather extraneous interference in my own domain. But you're still responsible for the titles on sale. That is correct. You could regard me as the captain on the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> so this is one of yours, then? Ah, the scented flower bed. Yes, a recent edition. I, uh, I haven't read it yet. Before you do, Mr. Swindley, perhaps you'd better read this. Is this some form of official complaint? In a way. It's a summons. Summons? <laughs> For me? Who are you? I'm Detective Sergeant Thompson of the local CID. And you're being charged on a complaint to the Watch Committee for selling to the public an obscene and lascivious book. Oh, dear. Should I go home and pack my pyjamas? <laughs> Said, the last of the book department. And the end of our reading circle. 
They make such a lovely cup of tea. They do say it's almost certain he'll be sent down. What shall we do on a Wednesday? Well, dear, he did go a bit far, didn't he? <laughs> With his new books, I mean. I don't know. You got through the Sultan's secret quicker than you read anything before. <laughs> you weren't exactly slow with tropical nights. <laughs> One thing is certain, if we ever have another reading circle, we mustn't have Mabel. Why not, dear? She shocked him. <gasps> Was it shock made her do it? No, pique. She spent five and six on the pleasures of Pompeii and then found it was about archaeology. <laughs> but Mr. Hunt, I'm facing ruin. To be taken from this place and immured behind grim walls. Oh, come on, Spinney, snap out of it. Look on the bright side. Which side is that? Well, you're not going to the guillotine. Anyway, you know very well the firm's going to take care of you. <laughs> You need a rope ladder and a getaway car to do any good. <laughs> Not so you know very well what I mean. You know that they've employed a first-rate barrister to look after you. Really? That's very considerate. Yes, I'm not going to stop his fees out of your salary either. You overwhelm me. <laughs> because I think they've stopped your Christmas bonus. Quite so. Come. Ah, oh, Mr. Swindley. Excuse me, Mr. Hunt. I did so want to tell Mr. Swindley how distressed I am at his news. Thank you, Mr. Clare. We shall all have to live down the stigma. We shall all have to be brave in this hour of trial. Let us not minimize the gravity of my situation. As I believe they term it in the underworld, I shall very shortly be doing porridge. <laughs> well, I'd be amending the holiday list. I'm hardly likely to figure in that. Unless, of course, Her Majesty has an open establishment at Ilfracu. Will you stop? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Swindler, I do want you to feel that you can call upon me if you want any help. I mean, I could stop the milk and papers for you. Mr. Swindley, <laughs> I'll write every month and send you a seed cake. Oh, most kind. <laughs> There'll be no need for that, Mrs. Aisley. I have so much confidence that you can take my car and drive yourself down the court in it. Oh, thank you very much, sir. I shall look forward to it. That's it, Smith. Look at it as a battle of wits. Enjoy yourself while they're still free. <laughs> and if the worst comes to the worst, Mr. Swinley, I mean, you can always work in the prison library. Yeah. <laughs> well, what's that, sir? Some of the cases have been put back till this afternoon. I'll make a note. Johnson versus Johnson, 2.30. Licensing extensions at 3.00. Uh, Regina versus Swindley at 3.45. I've got that. Leonard Swindley. Oh, <coughs> yes, sir. Uh, your case has been put back to 3.45 this afternoon. Oh, good. Then I'm not late. I'm looking for Sir Claude Wagstaff. He's defending me. He's going to get me off. Wagstaff? Yes. Get you off? Yes. You must be joking. Huh? <laughs> The betting at lunchtime was eight to one against. <laughs> I am looking for a Leonard Swindley. Uh, yes, sir. Good grief. Hope dies within the breast. <laughs> I hope I can satisfy you, sir. I hope you can, Swindley. I have first to satisfy myself that you're speaking the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. But I'm innocent. I have a complete answer to the charge. Yeah, lies already. Surely justice must prevail. Precisely. As I see it, you have no defence at all. I no have defense. read your ludicrous statement. An idiotic mixture of falsehood and insanity. It is, I take it, your hope that the bench will accept the proposition that you are living in a dream world. Living in a dream world? I, I don't quite follow. This book. Are you seriously going to tell the court that you thought it was about horticulture? But it's called the scented flower bed. <laughs> didn't you even read the flyleaf? No, I'm afraid I didn't, Sir Claude. I've been too busy. Listen to this. A throbbing tale of a voluptuous courtesan of the court of Philip of France, which describes with astonishing candor the intimate and dissolute life of French Marie. Men died for her favours, thrones toppled, and her poor poster bed was the very seat of power throughout Europe. Need I go on? <laughs> No, no, I agree. It does sound rather outside the scope of Percy Thrower. <laughs> Do you intend to keep up this pretense of innocence? But, sir, I am entirely blameless. Are you telling me that you did not know that 19 seductions took place between pages 75 and 92? Yes, I am, sir. Are you claiming that you are unaware that lewd and obscene words appeared on at least three pages out of every ten? Completely unaware. Are you denying that not less than six chapters finished with a row of asterisks? I am indeed. I will take the case. Ah! 
Then you believe in my innocence? Certainly not. You are plainly guilty. I shall offer a plea in mitigation. It won't do any good. It's a good thing you're good at gardening. Good at gardening? First offense, isn't it? Of course. In that case, it'll be an open prison. Plenty of spade work there. <laughs> with me on your side and full remission for good conduct, I think I can get you off with a mere three years. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. I do hope they don't send Mr. Swindler too far away. I mean, what with the cheap day returns going up? Then there's lunch. Mm. We'll need to make a day of it. He might be on the Isle of Wight. That would mean a sea trip as well. Very nice in the summer. I've already made his cake. Do tell him if you're going to put a file in it, Mrs. Edgeley. Otherwise, he'll never know. <laughs> All in it, Swindy. <clears throat> Looks as if the chairman is late, but we've got two magistrates, so I don't think that need hold us up. No, I wouldn't like to keep the Black Mariah waiting. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm late. It's <laughs> brief. What have you been doing? Leonard Swindley, you are charged that on or about the 12th of this month in the year of our Lord, 1966, you did knowingly and willfully allow to be sold in the store known as Dobson and Hawks a lewd and obscene publication. You are further accused that by permitting the sale to the public of a book containing passages deemed to be bawdy and salacious, you were solely responsible for circulating licentious matter liable to deprave and corrupt. Leonard Swindley, how do you plead? On behalf of my client, I wish to plead guilty. Guilty? Oh, I think there's been a little mistake here. I declare a 15 minutes recess to go further into this matter. <coughs> Before you adjourn, Your Worship, may I just have a few words with my barrister? I wish to change my plea. Change your plea after my instruction? Yes, I wish to plead not guilty. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you know? Swindy's got away with it. <laughs> it was all of a doodah on the telephone. Couldn't understand half of it. So it shouldn't be long now. Mr. <laughs> Swindley can take my cake home with him. Oh, I'm glad I didn't have to put it in the post. Of course, we shall miss those wee sea trips, but still, it's a great relief. <laughs> well, we're all teed up, ready for the warrior's return. Ah, and here he is. Oh. Welcome back, Swindley. Nice to see you. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, <laughs> 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 well, it's been, it's been quite an ordeal, but I think I shall recover. Good. Well, we've got something to celebrate. Oh. Have a glass of bubbly all round. There we are. Pretend that round. There we are. One for you. That's it. That's now then, come along, Swindley. A toast. Oh, uh, to British justice. <laughs> Not to mention Miss Bracewell. Oh, that was a turn up for the book, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Very droll, sir. Yeah. <laughs> but, never mind. <clears throat> Let's not talk about police courts any longer. Ladies, I give you Leonard Swindley, the one that got away. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Edgley, as we're celebrating, uh, do you not think we ought to have <sighs> sea cake? Oh, what a good idea. I'll go and get it. Excuse me, Mrs. Edgley. I'll uh, come and help you carry it. Oh. I've taken the file out. <laughs> 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 Mr. Hunt. Yes? Your remark about forgetting about police stations was rather premature, I'm afraid. Oh, really? Why was that? <clears throat> Your car, sir. Yes? I inadvertently reversed it into the Chief Constable's limousine. <laughs> <laughs> you... Right under the nose of a flaming copper, I suppose. I'm afraid so, sir. He was a very sharp young man. He very soon noticed that your road tax had expired. Oh, no! <laughs> They'd like you to, uh, to call in at the station on your way home, sir. Of course, on the other hand, I, uh, I could always have a word with Miss Braceful before you come up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.